Hi. I thought we'd start this lesson with an image of a uh, quite an amazing geological uh, site. Uh, these are the Muraki boulders on the South Island of New Zealand. Um, quite an amazing thing to go and see, to be honest. Um, clearly, these are geological materials. But could we identify what type of geological material these are? That's the task I'd like uh, to set you today. I want you to apply what you've uh, learned uh, in the last couple of lessons about identifying different types of geological material to a range of different um, uh, images I want you to apply what we've learned over the last few lessons in terms of grouping geological materials together on the basis of how they form to a new set of images. And these images are a little bit different in some ways. There are some pictures of, uh, of a rock face. There are some pictures of specimens. There are some pictures uh, actually taken looking down a microscope. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to identify um, all the materials. There are eight different ones on page uh, pages four and five of your theme one booklets. Can you put them into one of the five groups that we've identified? So are they mineral, fossil, igneous rock, sedimentary rock, metamorphic rock? In addition to doing that, I'd like you all to have a go at the digging deeper activity, where as well as identifying the materials, I want you to give a reason for this as well. Why do you think they are what you've uh, come up with? Just to remind ourselves then of these different um, materials and their properties. Down at the bottom of page three, the first of these, in the top left, shows igneous rock. We've got interlocking crystals uh, in a random orientation. The second of these images, in the middle there, shows a sedimentary rock. We've got fragments of a pre-existing rock that have been eroded, uh, taken somewhere else and laid down. On the right there, we see a metamorphic rock. This alignment of crystals. The, these crystals in this one, though, have been, have been um, bent and screwed up by all the pressure that's going on there. Think as well that that rock must have been fairly uh, soft uh, because of the heat for that to happen. Bottom left, we see a mineral, a distinctive crystal shape that's the same all the way through. And finally, in the bottom right, what's well, fairly obviously a fossil, that organic form, okay, in this case of a fossil called an ammonite. Those are the uh, five groups. What I'd like you to do now is apply that to question four. So, on pages four and five of your theme on booklets, you'll find the questions that are there. Identify those materials. All of you have a go at the digging deeper. You know, justify your reasons for it. Have a go at that now. Okay, then. Let's see what you've managed to come up with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through each of these images in turn, look at what it is, and give a key reason why uh, we've identified it as that. So, photograph A is a fossil. Now, you could say it was a sedimentary rock. It's certainly uh, surrounded by sedimentary rock. But the main part of this image is a fossil. And it's a fossil because it's a trace of a once living thing. In this case, it's a shellfish 
um, called a brachiopod. Photograph B then, we've got uh, a picture of a, a cliff face. Notice that there's a pen there for scale. Uh, good geological photos should have a scale in to show how big they are. Uh, this is an image of a sedimentary rock. And it's a sedimentary rock because we can see the eroded fragments of pre-existing rock. We can actually see the rounded pebbles within this rock that have been stuck together. This type of um, sedimentary rock uh, is called a conglomerate. We saw it in the previous practical. Photograph C then. Uh, this is a picture of a, of a polished surface of this rock. And it's an igneous rock. And the way we can tell this is an igneous rock uh, is we have these randomly arranged interlocking crystals. This particular igneous rock is an example of a granite. Because of the, uh, we find a mineral called quartz in it and uh, those crystals are actually relatively large. Although notice there's no scale on this photograph, which does mean we can't really judge uh, exactly how big those crystals are. Photograph D. Uh, this looks um, like it's been sculpted, like it's been made artificially, but it's not. This is a natural form. Uh, this is actually a mineral. And this particular mineral uh, is pyrite. Uh, it's a different form from the one we saw in the practical, um, but we can get these, these beautiful, perfect cubic crystals growing of, cal of pyrite, um, and we can see how they've sort of uh, grown across each other. The thing that makes this a mineral, though, is that it's, uh, it's uniform all the way through. Um, this particular one has a very regular form. Not all minerals do, um, but these uh, cubic uh, crystals are, are one of the uh, key features that we can see in some examples of pyrite. Photograph E. This is a picture taken down a um, geological microscope. So we can actually see the internal structure of the rock here. The, you're looking at probably an image that's maybe only a few millimetres across, but we can still see the key feature. This particular image shows a metamorphic rock. And the reason it shows a metamorphic rock is that we can see alignment of the minerals within this rock. There are crystals in here that are aligned, going from the top left down to the bottom right. This particular type of metamorphic rock is one we call a schist. Photograph F is an image of a very unusual mineral. Um, it is a mineral uh, because we've got uh, this uniform material in a regular form again. This particular one um, has this very fibrous form. Uh, it's actually a mineral called rutile, um, and rutile is uh, one of the main ores of titanium. Photograph G. This is a slightly tricky one. This, this again shows a polished surface of a rock, and this is an example of an igneous rock. Slightly mean, because uh, this is a type of texture of an igneous rock that we don't often look at. It's called a graphic texture. But again, we have random interlocking crystals. This particular igneous rock is another type of granite. And finally then, photograph H. Collection of uh, various things in here. But this is a sedimentary rock, but you could also say it was fossils. This is a sedimentary rock that's almost entirely made of fossils. You can see there's lots of fragments of different organisms in here. I can see um, examples of shellfish, 
uh, called bivalves, another shellfish called a brachiopod. Um, there is coral in here. There are fragments of another type of fossil we call a trilobite. You can actually see the, the dotted structure there, which is actually the eyes of a trilobite. So there's a big mixture of material in here. This, this is actually the um, type of sediment we can find from an ancient reef. This particular one um, formed along the uh, English-Welsh border about 400 million years ago. But we can tell this because it's fragmental. So we've got fragments stuck together, and those fragments are also fossils. Remember, we only find fossils in sedimentary rock. So, as the sun sets on the Moraki boulders, uh, they're worth looking up. You'll find that these are actually sedimentary structures. We can see that making these observations uh, of these key features of these different geological materials allows us to identify them. What we need to do next is to think how these materials might be connected to each other. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.